Okay, so as a lot of you know, I buy a lot of collections, and this week I ended up purchasing a Tinkerbell exclusive collection full of over 200 pins. Um, it might even be about 300, so I thought I would give you a little sneak peek. Here are some of the pins that were not in the book. Most of these pins are from the year 2000. Oh, there's a dopey in there, random. <clears throat> Most of them are from 2002 to 2004. A lot of really old, well, in Disney's world, in pin world, these are really old. An authentic one of these is really hard to find. Oh my gosh, look at that. I think pins and cats might just freak over this one. I'm sure a lot of these you've probably never even seen before. That one's super fun. Okay, so we got a good look at this pile. Now we're gonna take a look in this book. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. So when I'm buying a collection, I take everything in the collection, regardless of whether or not it has fakes or scrappers or fantasy or bootleg or whatever it may be, broken pins. I basically have to buy everything in the entire collection and I pay a certain flat rate per pin. When I sell them, I have to raise the prices on some to make up for the ones that um, were fakes or scrappers or whatever they may be that I can't make money on because we make an, an average price when I purchase the whole thing. And of course, it's a huge amount of work to sell an entire collection of one single character it's a huge amount of work to sell 300 pins anyways. 
So they always take that into factor, knowing that I'm gonna be doing all the work of selling the pins. So I usually get a good deal. Now I have to go through all of the pins, verify authenticity, because pins like this one have been faked. So I have to make sure that I'm not gonna sell a fake to anyone. Toss those into the zonk bucket. I also go through and I check for quality and I look to see if there are any scratches or dips in the paint, things like that. Missing gems or jewels, missing dangles. Look at all these old ones. It's so much fun to see the older ones. So I got to thinking, why not do what Disney did and have a Tinkerbell Thursday event? Disney used to release Tinkerbell pins every Thursday. I believe it was in the year 2002. New Tink pins every Thursday. We had so much fun lining up every morning to see what new pins they were. They were just open stock releases and then one limited edition sometimes. And I thought maybe I would do a Tinkerbell Thursday night live for all of you Tink collectors. Oh, see, here's one. Here's an example of what I do. See how she's missing two diamonds? So she's gonna end up getting pulled and put into my zonk bucket. I always have to go through and check for missing jewels, scratches and everything like that. I actually bought this collection sight unseen. They sent me a few pictures, and then I made my decision. I think it was a solid decision. I'm pretty happy with it. There's one hiding in here as well. I'm not sure what that might be. Oh, I think I know what it is now. Yeah. This one came in a nice little frame. Well, I really hoped you enjoyed watching these tinks. Comment below if you'd like to see them in a Thursday Night Live or if I should just intertwine them over the next uh, month or two in Friday Night Lives. Obviously, I don't wanna have a whole hour of Tinkerbell on a Friday night, um, knowing that a lot of people don't collect her. We'll see you again real soon. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe. I know Aaron is really enjoying watching his subscriber number go up.